Good day, everybody. Randy Franklin Smith here. Today we're talking about uh, the latest, and uh, don't want to use the term greatest, but I guess we could in terms of magnitude with uh, ransomware today. And uh, we're going to look at some recent attacks, and there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Uh, the landscape is changing and the risks are shifting. Um, but uh, as always, there's things that we can do to mitigate the risk and to detect and disrupt it before they get too far. So first of all, I want to say thanks to Logarithm, one of our most loyal sponsors of Real Training for Free over the years. And I have with me uh, the very knowledgeable colleague, uh, Brian Colson. Brian, uh, you work with the threat research team at uh, Logarithm, and then you're researching threats and then always looking at how to build uh, more intelligence and capability with regard to those threats into your technologies there, right? Correct, and thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Absolutely, yes, I work in the Logarithm Labs uh, in the threat research department, and I've been there for approximately almost four years. Yeah, we've done some good webinars together, and you've always got good stuff, as you do today, because you'll be handling uh, some of the uh, bullet points here on this list, and a very cool one, and that is being able to run a ransomware, a safe and harmless ransomware simulation against your network. But uh, before we get to that, I'm going to talk about new strategies from the ransomware bad guys, new tactics. Uh, and then we're going to go through three high-profile recent attacks. There's valuable stuff to learn with all of them. Then uh, Brian's going to get into a little bit more detail about some of uh, the ransomware and the groups involved and go from there. Okay, well, here's the new strategies. And the first one, this is really interesting. And Brian, please jump in wherever you want to with color commentary because, I mean, you research the stuff all the time, but exfiltrate, then encrypt. Why are the bad guys doing that? Now, there's a risk for them um, with exfiltration prior to encryption. And Brian, I, I, you know, I'm making the assumption, you know, that's interesting. Um, up until this very moment, I've just been making the assumption that they exfiltrate the data, then encrypted but I mean technically if they're conservative and targeted with what they uh, encrypt they could encrypt it but well regardless of when the actual encryption takes place throwing the switch and deleting the files and 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 uh, you know revealing themselves that has to take place after exfiltration and I guess my point here Brian is they are increasing their risk their threat of being detected because they have to exfiltrate this data and that's a lot more data exfiltration is is in, in terms of size and bandwidth is much greater than command and control traffic any thoughts oh, on that one yeah, no, absolutely. You're uh, spot on as far as like being able to spot that exfil data. Um, I mean, in some cases, we're talking about 25, 50 gigs worth of data going out the network. Uh, the key thing that we've been reading about in the press as far as whenever um, an investigation has gone on with the company has been, been impacted like this is that we typically find out that an adversarial presence has been on their network for months, if not longer. Um, scoping out their network, finding out what data is valuable, finding out communication patterns, also finding out where backups are stored. So that way when they do ultimately do the ransomware attack, then of course they are more successful where you're not able to restore even if you do have backups. If they can delete all the backups prior to initializing their ransomware attack, um, then of course you have no option but to pay in most cases. Uh, so there's definitely an interesting adversarial aspect behind this where um, I think it's been happening a lot uh, it's been happening like this a lot previously uh, over the years without the ransomware where adversaries have been on the network exfilling data and whatnot. It's just it's one of those things where now that ransomware is present, it becomes a financial aspect of it in which now it becomes part of possibly reporting by a company of uh, financial impacts when they do their quarterly statements. So that's why I think we're now hearing more and more about actual uh, attacks against companies, whereas before uh, the 
dollar amount was always unknown, and so we would not know exactly how many adversaries were actually attacking corporations. Well, that's a good point. And I kind of jumped the gun on this first bullet point, too. Why would they exfiltrate then encrypt? That is a big strategic change because they are running into companies that say, uh, no, you know, we've got our act together. Uh, we're just going to wipe these systems or remediate them and otherwise remediate them and keep on running. Um, so uh, that is then a response by the bad guys where they'll say, all right, well, we're going to exfiltrate the data, and if you refuse to pay the ransom for whatever reason, uh, because your, uh, uh, your, you know, your backup and recovery process is so good or, or whatever, we are going to publish your data on our leak portal. And so now we're holding the data. We're not holding the availability of the data hostage we are holding the confidentiality of the data hostage and are, are, are actually both. Uh, we, the bad guy, we're covering our bet that way. And uh, we're going to show you an example of where they do follow through on these threats uh, and uh, post your data online if you refuse to pay. So that really changes it, Brian. That, that means good backups is no longer an answer to ransomware with the exfiltration strategy shift. No, exactly. Because the backup isn't going to prevent, you know, backups address availability, not confidentiality. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. But, you know, here's the other thing, or, and that is, good backups, I'll talk about this later, but I just have to say something about it right now. I have never believed that good backups are an effective mitigation to ransomware, and that's because of the whole availability aspect. More on that to come. Here's another strategy, maybe, you know, it's always hard with some things to pick between strategy and technique, but, uh, or, or, or tactic, but another thing they're doing is shifting to better encryption, because there's been a whole, uh, micro industry springing up of ransomware decryption services because the decryption wasn't done that carefully. And if you've been in cybersecurity for any amount of time, uh, you know that uh, uh, encryption is difficult to get right. And that you know, has, I, in a twist of irony, has come to bear upon the bad guys, too. Generally, it's been a thing where, oh, you know, we, the good guys, our data is encrypted. Oh, there's a way around it. There's a way to reverse engineer the key, or you were careless with changing your keys or whatever. Well, hey, technology is technology, and uh, the same thing happens to them. But the big thing is, okay, well, they're getting better at that. They're using... Uh, real encryption uh, uh, technologies, open source encryption. That's ironic too, right? Uh, Brian, the, the bad guys can use open source just like uh, us good guys. But um, anyway, better encryption. So it's um, uh, harder to get the data back. Uh, also, definitely a strategy shift. They're becoming more targeted. Instead of spray, and pray just, you know, launching out a billion emails and, uh, oh, we get this hardware store or, oh, we get this, uh, you know, fairly small uh, attorney firm or a, uh, oh, wow, we got a hospital um, type of attacks. Now they're getting really targeted, and you're going to see a great example of that with Honda. Um, then that is the other thing, going after... In, in becoming more targeted, they're going for the big dollars, and to do that, they're going after the, the big companies. That by no means means that the risk is getting less for us uh, SMBs, um, because there's still plenty of spray and pray ransomware operators uh, that are more than happy to take a few grand from us. 
And then I've touched on this already, but availability versus confidentiality. Here is an, another way that they are going after availability, and that was true, as you're going to see, with Honda, because the systems that they were really targeting did not necessarily have that much confidential data. They just ran the factory lines and so shut down production for a company like Honda and uh, that's a pretty big deal. So the bad guys just want our money. They are willing to go after hitting us both on the confidentiality or availability uh, vectors or both. They don't care. We have to care about both of them. So to support those strategies,